Good morning. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock, and that's going to mean only one thing, Trump Week. Well, welcome. I'm Tim Apicella. I'm your host, and I'm here with Winston Welch, and we are here to talk about what transpired and all oh, what has transpired in the last week. Good morning, Winston. How are you? Uh, good morning, Tim. Uh, doing well here, and uh, yeah, it's, a, a, it's amazing how much can happen in a week and how people's psychology and physical status and um, just mental states can change in a week of economic states and all of that. So, um, but you know, that's it. We, we would, we've been saying there's a lot of change every week for the last year and a half since we've been doing Trump week. So um, it's the roller, co roller coaster ride as usual. So what I'd like to do is talk about where we've been um, really since the advent of January and, and where we're at today, because there's been quite a transformation with, with Donald Trump and and everyone has noticed a, a dramatic change in his demeanor and what he's saying. So uh, we're gonna examine how we got to this point. But before we do that, we're gonna have to kind of do a little chronology. And I'm just gonna briefly go down in chronology and do a summary of kind of Donald Trump's response to the coronavirus. Okay. So uh, back in January, January 21st, the United States had zero cases and we had zero deaths. On the 22nd of January, Donald Trump said that we had this totally under control and it was one person coming in from China and we have it con under control and uh, everything's gonna be just fine. Now that was an interview on CNBC. On the 31st of January, we then had six cases in Washington state and uh, that was in uh, the city of Kirkland. On the 17th of February, that jumped up to 15 cases. February 24th, um, Donald Trump said that the coronavirus is very much under control in the United States and the stock market is starting to look very good to me. And that was a Twitter comment. And not sooner after that comment that um, Mnuchin came in and said, yeah, there's some buying opportunities in the stock market. And they pretty much have this thing um, clamped down and locked tight. But uh, at that time on the 24th, the Dow Jones had gone from 28,869 down to 27,961. On February the 25th, we had 53 cases, no deaths. On the 28th of February, Donald Trump said, said it's going to disappear one day. Like a miracle, it will ju just disappear. And that was at his uh, news conference. Now, that same day, we had uh, the, the primary in South Carolina where Donald Trump on the podium at his, his rally in South Carolina basically was comparing the coronavirus to a, de a Democrat's uh, intention of a hoax and trying to make him look bad. And so that was on the 28th of February. Then we, we move into early March and Washington and Oregon, they firmly, uh, firmly announced that there is a transmission through the community on the coronavirus. And the very next day, Donald Trump says, I think that the 3.4% or the, the fatality rate for this virus is really a false number. And on the same, same day, he said, well, some people have this at a very light level and they won't even go to the doctor or the hospital. They'll just get better. These are many things that people do. Moving forward on that same day, uh, Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency for California. On the 7th of March, uh, we have now 417 cases and 17 deaths. On March the 9th, Donald Trump says, fake news media and their partner, the Democratic Party, is doing everything within its semi-considerable power to inflate the coronavirus situation. That was a Twitter uh, announcement. And that same day, the Dow had gone from 28,869 all the way down to 23,851. The next day, Donald says, we're prepared, we're doing a great job with it, and it'll go away. Just stay calm and it'll go away. That was a meeting with the GOP senators. On the 11th of March, um, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus-19 as a pandemic. On the 13th, we had 605 cases and 22 deaths in the United States. On the 14th of March, Donald Trump declared a national emergency. We're now moving in mid-March and uh, Donald Trump, 
now Donald Trump has now said we have an invisible enemy. And this is when the NBA canceled their, their season and Disneyland and Universal Studios uh, basically closed their parks. Same day, Donald says, we're using the full power of the federal government to defeat the virus. And that's what we've been doing. On the 17th of March, Donald Trump said, I felt it was a pandemic all along before it was called a pandemic. He said that at a news conference. And then on the 23rd of March, the cure can't be worse than the disease. And then as we know after that, uh, the United States would be open for business by Easter Sunday. So here's a long winded chronology to where we've been. And what do you think about it, Winston? How do you feel the progression of Donald Trump and the transformation of Donald Trump has taken place? Well, I think it's part for the course of what we've seen from the administration is uh, deflect, deny, um, blame others for what, whatever it is. It just happened to be a pandemic in this case um, and not not addressing a reality as it is, at least from well, half the nation's perspective or from expert perspective or, or whatever perspective. But um, there was a lot of lost time here uh, that we could have maybe made better preparations and are just seeing where th these holes and weak spots were. I don't know that anyone could have immediately produced the types of masks and medical supplies that uh, ventilators that are needed instantly. That does take time to ramp up. And when your supply chains are cut off, it's tough. But hopefully, hopefully, and this is a, this is a month to test your faith in a lot of systems, um, and it will get worse from here. I think he's right about that. <clears throat> Someone got to him somebody and maybe anthony fauci and deborah bricks i don't maybe it was ivanka just said actually this is real uh daddy and we got to do something about it you got to do something about it you've got to just act as if you're a serious adult and that you you have some reassuring comments for for folks because that's what they need right now they need real action and a a, a responsible adult to to um, guide the nation at this time so and it may be just stepping aside is the best thing to do and let other people do it. So I, I, I'm a little hopeful right now just for what's happened in the last 48 hours. Yeah. Well, there's, there were uh, reports that Tucker Carlson actually drove to Mar-a-Lago and basically yeah. pleaded with Donald Trump to take coronavirus 19 seriously. And I, they, they suspect that that had some influence. Plus, it wasn't just the, uh, the, tr uh, the transformation of Donald Trump, it was really the transformation also of Fox News. And uh, Tucker Carlson was kind of on that lead. Um, now it's starting to talk about it in a very serious tone and matter. And of course, Rush Limbaugh wasn't doing a whole lot. Um, basically, he was kind of a part of the, 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 the drill team of saying it's a hoax. And so we've had a transformation of the, of the, the, the news media that Donald Trump's watched. And so I'm wondering which one led to which. Well, you know, I, when you're faced with the reality, unless we have a complete suppression of free media here, and you have cameras in hospitals and seeing doctors sobbing and nurses without equipment striking and just saying, this is a reality right here at this hospital that you know of because you drive by it every day. This is what we're facing when you have higher level people, when you have governors coming out and saying, oh, I wasn't on the favored governor list. Um, I'm on the do, do not call list by the president because I'm not showing, I'm not appreciating him enough. Um, and then you see other states getting all of their equipment that they asked for, like Florida, which apparently didn't ask until quite later and just did a, uh, uh, a shelter and home uh, designation today or stay at home. I'm not sure uh, which one exactly was. When you have this, the real, the the reality of what's hitting the ground, it can't be denied anymore. When you have actual people dying and you you can see that, I, I just saw that um, Pence came out just in the last half hour, maybe a little bit before that saying, we are essentially Italy at this point, um, or Italy is our model. So that's very sobering. And if it's not um, sobering for people out there, they need to wake up and just say, okay, this is reality. We gotta pay attention 100% now. So uh, I think I think Donald Trump got that message somehow from someone yeah. somewhere. Well, I think he has, but at the same time, I think he still thinks he's raging in himself a perfect ten. When asked that question not long ago by a reporter at the uh, Rose Garden, they asked him, "How would you rate yourself on this on this job?" And he said, "I give myself a 10. So that's that's kind of jaw dropping in my world. 
But also I see Donald Trump as moving the goalpost of what constitutes success. Um, before, basically, he said this wasn't real and we got to clamp down. But now he's willing to admit that 100,000 to 240,000 deaths would be actually success because that's certainly a whole lot better than 2.2 million. And I, I, I find this discussion um, appalling that the, 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 the measure or the yardstick of success is now to 100,000 or to 240,000 uh, deaths of uh, American citizens. What, what's your read on that? It, it is appalling. It just took so much of this administration, what we've, uh, the, what we've been through in the last several years, but now this is real, this is beyond putting kids in cages or whatever that's, that's happened over the last four years. Now you're talking about just huge numbers of Americans, a quarter of a million by the best estimates going to be dying in the next couple of weeks why anyone would say that they're doing uh that they're giving themselves a 10 on this or even that uh you know comparing their ratings with the bachelor or um you know monday night football or whatever it was this is this just shows that we're not really there yet with having a, a seriousness of um the president that needs to cut out that stuff. He needs to stop saying that he's doing that. He that if they only if we only lose a quarter of a million people or hundred thousand people, that that's doing a good job. He doesn't need to rank himself as a ten. I don't know that he. I think his scale is ten out of ten. So he doesn't. There, he's not going to give himself a nine on anything. But we don't need him ranking himself. History will judge this enough. He needs to know. He needs to really take a deep look inside. I don't know that it's possible, but um, that noise is so, so loud now. And I think it was on the show maybe a week or two ago. And I thought the, the, there was a poll asked about uh, the, um, should we ban uh, the news media from covering these essentially um, uh, you know, campaign uh, rallies every day. And I saw mm -hmm. CNN uh, has stopped carrying MSNBC. I think the New York Post, uh, maybe Was uh, Washington Post, New York Times. I think they've just, they, they will still play them, but they're not sending the reporters uh, anymore because they realize that the facts are are sometimes not the facts. They are campaign rallies. I mean, he had the My Pillow guy on there the other day. Yeah. What does the My Pillow guy have to do with anything? Uh, we need serious adults in the room. And so when you have that, the, 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 when we don't have that, it's it's it is appalling, and we just need to maybe uh, all these news conferences. I think this this censoring is fine until yeah. we can figure out what was actual news. Let me, you know, do you think Donald Trump has finally got on board? Do you think he's finally learned his lesson, or are we going to see Mike Lindell from My Pillow Company um, back on the air? Because you're absolutely right, um, Winston, that the the press conferences have become his impromptu campaign rallies that he's nearly not holding anymore. Uh, do you think that's going to end, or do you think Donald Trump continues to try to mix uh, battling the coronavirus versus his campaign aspirations? Well, it's uh, maybe one and the same now because his pollsters got to him, if nothing else, that says uh, there's an interesting article about uh, deferred uh, economic. Uh, pain uh, and and why people will take eight dollars today versus ten dollars next week um it's in, in a similar sense here it was a, it was a good analogy but basically that the overwhelming majority of americans want to see a shelter in place designation through the end of april or longer uh, longer was mm -hmm. uh it was even uh, majorities of people because they realize i don't want to i don't want to go out there it's dangerous so we need to have this designation and so that he can align the majority of Americans' thoughts for uh, right now with his long-term perspective, because if it cuts the death rate by keeping everybody at home, that's good news for him. So um, in this case, it's, it's good that the two have melded together, that public opinion has said, do this, not that. And so he has listened, if nothing else, just to the pollsters for his chance of reelection. Uh, so, uh, but otherwise, these campaign rallies that are happening every day. Let's get back. Let's get Anthony Fauci, Deborah Bricks, the My Pillow guy. Maybe um, they can host a reality show with him. Uh, he and uh, Donald Trump as co-host after this is all over. I don't know, but he doesn't belong in the Rose Garden talking about how great the president is. 
Well, in the Trump circus, do you think all of America now, even as loyal 45, 48% are now taking the coronavirus seriously? Or do you think there's still denial? Um, Jay and I did a show about three weeks ago, and we're still getting comments as of yesterday that uh, they are, the people who are commenting on the show that we did, are, they're convinced that the coronavirus is still a blatant hoax. Do you think the rest of America is on board with Donald Trump now and the seriousness of the virus? I know uh, governor, um, the, the governor for Florida finally had a uh, stay-at-home order enacted today. So what do you think? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I would say that when you've got uh, a president who's now having uh, himself or, uh, you know, Mike Pence or, or um, uh, Mitch McConnell saying that the real reason for this was the impeachment. It, it took their eyes off the ball and they could have focused so much better um, or, or blaming the media, or whatever it is. We know that these, the people that are paying attention know this is patently false, that uh, the things that had happened of dismantling, um, you know, the, the pandemic response that was disbanded uh, by Trump or, uh, you know, firing the head of the CDC who was working with China, all of these uh, ignoring reports that, that, came out to, uh, that came out today that they had a pandemic report in 2019 from the administration saying this could devastate the U.S. economy. Talking in general about that, what that would be and how we could respond. So um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sold that uh, we're looking at any coherent truths that are constantly being uh, relayed from uh, this administration. I think we see everything to the contrary. I think that Donald Trump will go straight back to uh, his old ways as soon as he, whenever he can uh, during this whole time. And then afterwards, certainly uh, for right now, maybe it seems like he's getting more serious uh, just for the moment, but don't hold your breath on that one. Right. So you had alluded to something that I've, I, I also picked up on, and that is uh, Mitch McConnell was trying to now shift blame to the Democrats and cite that the, the impeachment got in the way of Donald Trump's thinking and, and not paying attention to the coronavirus and the alert to that. Um, but we know the impeachment was done early, early February, and Donald Trump was still in denial well into the end of February and uh, early, early March. So that one didn't quite pan out. And even Donald Trump said that, um, yeah, I was had my mind on a uh, the hoax of the of the impeachment was a hoax. So he, he went down that road yesterday, but he did say something very very telling, and that was, I knew all along that this was serious. But I'm a cheerleader. I I, I don't like to be the bearer of bad news. I didn't want to panic the markets, and I didn't want to panic the American public. And so it sounded like Donald Trump was using that as his foil uh, for where we're at right now today and looking at 100 to 250,000 potential deaths here in the United States. Well, whatever he needs to tell himself and, and the masses, you, you mentioned about his followers, will they believe it? Of course they'll believe it. They will believe whatever he says um, to a huge degree. And that's just the way, that, that's the reality we've been dealing with for four years. When you asked earlier about um, are people getting the message, they are getting the message. They are understanding that they're, they're local uh, leadership has stepped up. States, mayors, counties, um, their companies, uh, you know, their their uh, local, uh, any any organization that they're involved with. Everyone else is stepping up. So they're getting the message. You see in polls that people are taking it more seriously, that they are uh, realizing it's a threat. It's not everywhere. I think it was the governor of Mississippi that said um, he wasn't going to shut down bars and restaurants because he didn't want the uh, the fascism boot on people's throat or something to that effect. And so you do have holdouts and they're going to be in all of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the regular states that you'd have, uh, and cities that you'd expect that in. Are, are you surprised, Winston, on the, the percentage of, of the polling that basically is stating Donald Trump has done a pretty good job? Are you surprised by any of that? You know, it's like I said here before, people want to rally around the leader. I want Donald Trump to succeed. I, I, it, absolutely. I, yeah, I pray for the president, just like Nancy Pelosi said she does. And it's praying for his strength to have some wisdom and guidance in this, that the way that anybody prays for anybody else, that, that, that he makes the best decisions that he can. There's no insincerity in that. 
people want mm -hmm. Donald Trump to step up to the plate and to do the best job that he can and to give him whatever strength that comes, whether it's divine or whether it's from Deborah Bricks or that's the same thing. It doesn't really matter. As long as he is uh, getting what he needs, that's fine. Now, as far as um, people rallying around the president, that is a normal thing during these, these things. And if he steps up to the plate and he gives us what's really presidential for all of the nation, not just his base, his fans or whatever, or at the states that are that are possibly on the line to vote for him, um, then you, his numbers should go up because he's acting in a presidential manner. But when he's not, I think that number of 48, 49%, it's surprising. But for people that follow this, they realize as you did in your introduction about all of the statements leading up to where we are just in the last 48 hours, there's a lot of catch up to do. And so uh, half the nation is still looking at that and saying, and the, my pillow guy coming on and they're saying, this is not really being given the absolute 100%, 110% attention that it needs, full stop. No yeah. more blaming the media or saying it's a hoax or whatever. Well, okay, let's talk about the media because he took some pretty hard shots at the um, PBS um, reporter and um, Jim Acosta. He's taken some pretty hard shots at saying that you know, they're reporters and they're you know, anarchy. And so at what point do you think the media would um, either continue to engage on this topic with Donald Trump in the Rose Garden or, or just tune in when um, Fauci and Bricks, Dr. Bricks are reporting their numbers and then Mike Pence comes in and reports his report and pretty much cut Donald Trump out of it. Do you, do you think that there should be more of a concerted effort to do that or, or, or just continue as is? Well, you know, think about in the history of this nation, when the president gets on, when Roosevelt got on for his fireside chats, people sat around the radio and listened to him. When the president comes on the podium, it should, be, um, it should be a reverent place. It should be a a place where we do listen, where we pay attention because we're getting true, honest, um, useful information that pertains to all of us. And uh, as far as how we should have, from, since we're not always getting that and we haven't gotten that and we get this bullying behavior for reporters, these are not, as one article said, they're not stenographers, they're reporters. They're there to ask questions because this is such an important part of our democracy is that we hold our leaders accountable. We need to know what decisions are being made, why they're being made. All of these, the questions that they ask, it's very important. And so when you have major news media deciding they're not going to attend because the information is dubious, it's, it's a sad day for America. And I would like to see that not happen. But uh, when they're just looking at their, their reporter's health versus getting the information. However, as Donald Trump said a long time ago, I'm the best thing that ever happened for the media. People tune in. They want to see his antics. They want, it's like a, a train wreck walking by and just looking and, and rubbernecking. You can't believe what's going to come out next. So he's undoubtedly good for every banner and headline. He's obsessed everyone in this nation. You know, it seems like Donald Trump's been pretty successful in, in playing the media and, and, you know, twisting it to his his favor. To what degree do you think he's being successful of portraying the reporters like Jim Acosta um, as non-patriotic and that working against the, the interest of America when it comes to the coronavirus? I, I saw hints of that on the last couple of press conferences that he's, he's starting to twist that uh, that any critical question to him is really an unpatriotic uh, attitude and it's not appropriate at this time. Have you witnessed that? And, and do you think he's going to get away with that? You know, again, his, his base, his fans will say, yeah, you're right, old Jim Acosta, or whoever it is, asked you the nasty question of, did you, what did you mean when you said, don't call the, the lady in, in, in Michigan? And they read it verbatim. And he, or whatever the question is, and he says, I never said that. You're a nasty, you're a nasty uh, woman, you're a nasty reporter, whatever he says. Putting them down instead of saying, I thank you for that question. I think that it was taken out of context, even if it wasn't, it doesn't matter. We can't expect the mature response here. Um, so his, his people are gonna believe what he says, but he, remember, this is the man who identified the media as the enemy of America. 
a long time ago. So it's it's exactly fits into his narrative, unless they're the media that are going to give him good ratings and good attention. And we already know this. So if you believe him, yeah. it's not going to make a difference. If you don't believe him, it's not gonna, and it uh, does make a difference. Well, the last question, we're running out of time here. And that is, you know, it, it seems that April 30th might be a rather aggressive date, uh, just like Easter Sunday was going to be a very aggressive time period for us to resolve uh, this horrible virus. Um, I see this thing going on in, into May, and I see the markets tanking even further. So when we finally do emerge uh, uh, from this virus and, and the deaths that we're going to sustain, um, how do you think the United States is going to be a different place, uh, both politically, uh, economically? What do you think? What do you think? How do we emerge out of this horrible time? And and how do you think Donald Trump comes out of it as well? You know, it's a it's a question for many shows to come up. But when we're looking in here in Hawaii at having 25 or 30% unemployment for the duration of the year, devastating to people. Um, the longer that this took to get clamped down nationally, uh, locally, whatever, uh, our industries, the, the, the economy is going to be in a sad way for a very long time. Uh, like so none, very few people alive have seen. Um, I th I remain hopeful though that people are developing new systems. They're supporting each other in ways uh, that didn't exist a little bit ago. Um, they're they're discovering what's important to them. Important. What haven't I been focusing on that I should be focused on? Um, who should I be focusing on that I haven't been focusing on? I think all of these questions are coming up. So I remain uh, bully that people are going to come out with um, stronger, resilient. Uh, as far as Donald Trump goes, um, he's probably going to come out of this. He will probably come out of it, I, I don't know, stronger than before. I really don't know. Maybe not. Maybe if, when it sinks in the, the reality of what's happened until now and people start actually dying in vast numbers, we'll have a different story. But I can't predict uh, everything I would have predicted about this presidency and every action that has been taken or not taken in the last four years has confounded all conventional wisdom. So I, I don't know is the short answer of it. All righty. Well, those are very good observations, Winston. And I want to thank you for being on the show and sharing your thoughts. And I guarantee you next week is going to be just as um, wild ride that it is with this week. And I uh, wish you well, and I wish your, your, you and your, your friends and family well, and stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. I'm Tim Apicella here with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm here with Winston Welch, and we'll see you next week on Trump Week. Aloha.